New fresh start, please. The new one, just play this one. <laughs> so we have a bit of a mix. It really can't hurt to start brand new. I haven't unlocked much stuff either way, so let's just make a new profile. We'll leave the tutorial tips on, not for me, but so you guys can see it. Shape skates. Yeah, it looks like most people are saying new profile. Okay, so again, yeah, this is very chess-like. Uh, let's just let's just go ahead and and you can check it out. Humanity destroyed. Vec threat unstoppable. Mission failed. Open a breach. Time to go back and try again. So this game, you have squads of three, and there are these mechanized units. They each can do different things. And so again, it's a it's a grid turn-based game, and then you can have a a time traveler. Who's here today? I see Deltrin in the chat. We'll name we'll name this fella after my boy Deltrin. You're gonna be our first time traveler. So you can unlock different time travelers that you can always start each round with. <clears throat> Do I play paradox games? I I've tried. They're very complicated to me. Like I've tried learning and they just they just overwhelm me very fast. I'm a very impatient player. Um, so you know what? Rather than going through every single piece of this, let's just go ahead and start the tutorial. We'll play on normal. As you can see, there's other squads that we can eventually unlock as we earn coins. You earn coins by completing the game and actually completing achievements with each type of mech group. So we're just going to play with the default. And this is sort of a roguelite-ish game, where it's it's randomized, and there's you kind of play the game in runs. So you can complete the game in a, in a couple hours, and then you restart, and you do it again with a different mech group. So there's these four islands. So we have to go to Archive Incorporated. This museum island recreates old Earth as it was before the oceans rose and nearly wiped out humanity. The bad news is the Vec are overrunning our island, putting refugees and historical artifacts at risk. The good news is we have Old Earth military artifacts that can help in the fight. Okay, there's a combat simulation. Yeah, sure. Again, I know how to play this game, but we'll do this just so you all can can understand what's going on here. Because this is all about strategizing your turn. You take your time, you figure out what you have to, to do. So, every map has buildings, and they're connected to the power grid. So, it's basically your, your overall playthrough health. If this goes down to zero, you fully lose. So, this guy has an attack, it shoots in a straight line. If it lands, it's going to hit this building and reduce the power grid. Here's one of our combat mechs. So, as with most turn base, the idea is you have a move and a shoot. Or a move and an attack, rather. And then using an attack command ends your turn. So, you typically want to move and then attack. So, it's basically saying, hey, it's a tutorial, move and then punch him. Use the weapon. We're going to punch him. So you can actually see what this does when you click it, I think. What this is saying is it's going to do two damage, and it's going to move this enemy. So the enemy is is telegraphing what he's going to do. He's going to shoot this building. If we punch him, he's going to move one tile down. And he'll, he'll be alive, but you'll notice now his attack has been updated so that he's attacking the mountain instead. So we save the power grid. Are all maps that small? Yes, most of them are this size. I don't think they get much bigger. But you'll see this game becomes very complex. It starts very simple and becomes extremely complicated. It, very fast as well. So this is saying, like, pushing enemies and, and movement-based attacks are actually extremely important. As opposed to just outright killing things. Especially early on when you don't have much damage. So we end our turn. The enemy shoots. New enemies spawn. So the enemies, again, the, the key to this game is that enemies telegraph what they're going to do, so you can respond to it. And sometimes you have you have to choose, am I willing to take damage on my mechs? Am I willing to lose some, some of the power grid? Do I want to go for an optional objective, which usually gives you currency to buy upgrades for your mechs? So right now we have to choose what we want to do. So you can highlight and see how far our tank can move. So now we have a tank mech. The tank mech is sort of like a... 
a rook in chess, where it can shoot up and down any lane. So this is basically saying, here's where we can val shoot validly. And then, so the tank also pushes. So what we could do, this this fella only has one health. Even if he didn't, even if he had three health, we'd, we'd shoot him only for one damage. and But he would still be pushed, so his, his damage would not hit this building. So we're going to shoot him. He's dead. Meanwhile, we want to come over here. We can punch this guy. He's dead. So if anyone has any questions, again, on, on different aspects of this game, let me know. But again, it becomes very complex. Now we have an artillery mech. Artillery weapons can shoot over other obstacles. The artillery mech's weapon will only damage units on the center tile, but ad adjacent tiles will get pushed. So watch this. So, the game again, this is a tutorial where I'm not even going to move him. The idea is, if we shoot this, uh, this bug person... What this is telling us is it's going to do one damage to the bug person, and it's going to push these two, whatever these, what, I don't know the names of the enemies, but it's going to push these two. And if your enemy's on land, if they get pushed into water, they instantly die. So we take our shot, instant death, and then we can just come in here with our combat mech and punch this thing to death. Jay, does this game have a storyline? Yes, yeah, so it's like a post-apocalyptic story where these bug things, they're called Vec, have come and destroyed humanity. And what we're doing is we can continuously open breaches and go back in time to replay the battles to hopefully win. That's the idea. So we still have a, a turn available. Sure, we'll move him. Let me end turn. Now again, this is just the tutorial. You can imagine, this gets hugely complicated <laughs> eventually right so the enemy moves and then they indicate what they're going to do so we have to decide okay well there's a few different things we can do in order to win so it's this basically saying to win all you have to do is survive for four turns and not let the power grid go to zero and then the bonus is kill all the enemies so there's a couple of things we have to take care of here obviously our tank is getting hit in theory all i have to do is move the tank i just have to do that he, now, he's no, he's not going to take damage when the enemies act. The question is, we want to do some other stuff. Um, we can always undo our moves. That's pretty nice. Uh, only if you shoot, only if you take your attacking action, can you not undo it. So, we have to decide again, how do we, how do we want to approach this? One thing I can see right away is I can move... What I could do with my artillery is move it here and attack. And what would happen is, this bug person's going to get shifted. So he's not, so he won't be endangering my tank. And then this fine fellow will be pushed into the water. So my thought is I, I shoot here, I push the firefly into the water. He moves over here. And then what I would also do next, I could just, with my tank, I could just shoot this, uh, the hornet. Just so that it, it, it will get pushed back so it'll, it'll be attacking the tile behind it. And then I kill this with uh with my combat mech so we go here kill we shoot here and then we shoot here and then we end their turn the, you can get the vec to attack each other as well they'll always attack where they're telegraphed to attack every time thank you deltron for posting the uh discord as well appreciate it Okay, so again, we're only on the tutorial, so this isn't going to be particularly challenging. Let's just uh, move up here. Ooh, we'll undo that. So that's what I was saying. So I moved here without really thinking. If I shoot this fire, or whatever this one's called, if I shoot this hornet, it will die, but it's going to get pushed into this building because our tank has a push, which is going to reduce our power grid. So that's the kind of stuff you have to constantly be on the lookout for. So what I'm going to do instead, I'm going to move my artillery back. I'll move up with the tank and shoot this. I'll take my one damage shot with my artillery here, and then I'll finish him up with my mech who does two damage. Now, the tiny map, I see people in the chat talking about how small the map is. You, would, you will really be surprised at how, uh, how limiting uh, the maps may seem, but it actually just adds the complexity as we move on.
Congratulations, your first successful mission. Commander, I'm confident in your ability to save the planet after such extensive training. Sure. The power grid connects every corporate island. Any damage it takes in missions will persist. The VEC caused damage before you arrived, but there will be opportunities to restore it. Every mission has different potential rewards for completing bonus objectives. You won't be able to do every mission on the island, so choose carefully. You get power cores to upgrade your mechs, which I don't think we have any right now. The, the little lightning bolts is to get grid power to increase the power grid. Again, you only lose if it goes to zero. And then reputation. The idea is with the stars, this, these are all bonus objectives. If you get the stars, then you, it's like currency. And when you finish the island, you can spend it to upgrade your mechs. So I can only rename... So I have Deltrin here. Can I rename my others? We got Fenrir. And we got Philip Coria. So we got my boy Deltrin here. Um, I see... I see Beeman in the chat, so we'll say Big Beeman. And I see Vastin hanging out in the chat, so Vastin, you're gonna be our artillery. You're gonna be our artillery. There we go. So there's really nothing we can do with our mechs. We don't have any power cores. But the idea is when we get power cores, you install them into the mech. And you would, you know, you would then allocate it to say, oh, plus two health for my combat mech, or plus one move. Eventually you just level up your, your mechs. So the pilots themselves also level up. So for example, we've got Deltrin here who's a special pilot. And he starts with experience, so he gets bonus XP. And then as he levels up by getting kills, he gets more more stuff. Same with my other two pilots. These pilots are less special. They don't persist through timeline jumps, whereas uh, Deltrin would. But eventually as they level up, they also get skills, which typically like gives them an extra reactor or something like that. Alright, let's get started here. So I'm probably going to go to the research center, because it unlocks parts of the island <coughs> that, uh, that it's touching. And it also has two bonus objectives, but we have to defend the train versus do not kill the volatile vac. Let's go ahead and defend the train. Old Horus here is the only diesel train left on the planet. That isn't at the bottom of the ocean, anyway. He's still going strong, carrying vital supplies across the island. Okay, so here we go. It's our first real mission. I'm not good at this game. I've only completed it once. Uh, okay, so we've got fireflies, uh, scorpions. These web us. These can web things. And then this thing, the scions. All other Vec receive plus one HP as long as the scion is living. So we want to try to prioritize killing that right away. Okay, well, let's, uh, let's just drop in here. Didn't have much flexibility on where we could go. Okay, emerging enemies. So basically saying next turn, enemies will emerge from these. You can block them. So the idea is you can take a mech and put it on top of the uh, emerging vac, or you can do it, or you can push an enemy on top of it. So that will stop an extra enemy from spawning next turn, and it will also, um, it will also do damage to the unit that's on top of it. Just one extra damage. So the idea is here, occasionally I'm gonna get stuck. And uh, what I'm going to do is probably just ask the chat for help at certain times. So I really want to get rid of the scion, but I don't have anything that can hit it and do enough damage. Um, I think what I'm going to have to do... So obviously, the train is taking damage. I can kill this one instantly by pushing it into the water with my tank or my or my uh, combat mech. So you want to plan this out. You don't want to waste turns. Once you attack with a unit, then you can't do anything else with it. So let's plan out what we want to do. The scion is floating, so it won't be killed by water. And we have to take care of the Firefly and the Scorpion. So again, I'm thinking what we'll do, or what I'm going to do, I'm going to push the Scorpion into the water, and then I will punch the Firefly down, and then I will push it with Vastin to block one of the spawning Vex. And then hopefully next turn we can kill the Scion. So here's what we're going to do. I'm going to push... We're gonna punch, and then we're gonna push it with our artillery 
to block the spawning vec. So now we can see uh, the only enemy left doing damage is the firefly and it's attacking nothing. So the train will move on unhindered. Yeah, there's no timer on the turns. Okay, same thing. Okay, so what I really want to do is kill this Scion. There's a couple things I could do here. Here's another instance where I could just push him into the water. We can easily push this guy to block another spawn. I really, really want to kill this Scion, so I could come here with Deltrin and instant kill him because it does two damage. We push this one so it blocks a spawn, and then we knock him into the water. So I think that's exactly what we'll do. So we... We can actually do this... If we... Now oh, that's gonna knock him over. We have to move here. If we shoot here... We push the scorpion down. He's gonna take a damage. He's gonna take one damage. Yeah, I think this is fine. So let's... This isn't gonna damage the train, is it? No. Okay, so we push him. Burning forest applied burning. That's fine. We move down here. We're blocking a spawn with Deltron, so he'll take one damage. We kill the Scion. It's gonna get knocked back and do an extra damage to the scorpion. What just killed him? That was strange. Huh. I don't I don't know what just killed him. Okay, well, you know what? Let's uh we can't do anything with uh with Beeman, so. Your mech health, by the way, is a resource that you can you can lose, because your mechs get healed up after every battle. So as long as... See, they automatically repair all damage after the battle. So you want to use your max. You, you want to explicitly use your max to take damage. There's only one turn left, so as long as we get through this without outright losing, we'll be absolutely fine. So what we can do pretty easily here is we... We could take a shot here. This will push... Well, it doesn't really matter. I mean, we could do a bunch of stuff here. So let's just shoot here. Move up with Deltrin. We could just kill all this stuff. There we go. And we've won. And we save the train, which means we get both corporate points. Oh, when you kill when I killed the Scion, the 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 Firefly lost its HP, I see. We saved a hundred or a thousand civilians because none of the power grid buildings got destroyed. The refugees will be grateful for the supplies, and I owe you my personal thanks for saving El Horus. We two relics have been through a lot together. Cool. There we go. We got two corporate reputation, which we'll be able to spend later. Now we can decide we can go to the pasture with the bonus objectives taking less uh, less than three grid damage. And protect the power generator. I like the water on this map. Or we could check Ohm Town, which I do like stocking up on corporate reputation, but I don't like the setup of this map as much. You got a little bit of a choke point in there, so I'm thinking we go to the pasture instead. I don't really need extra power grid. Tidal waves also are nice. I like the setup of this map so much more. Okay, we got an environment effect. So what that means is that the, at the beginning of the next turn, this all turns into water. My mechs can be in water, but they can't attack if they're in water. So the attack order is, you can see all the time, if there's fire damage applied to something that happens first, the environment damage happens second, and then the enemy attacks in the order that's highlighted here. So you can see all that. It's all about planning. So I want to get rid of this Scion as fast as possible, but if I put my combat mech here, I suspect that the Scorpion will come up and try to web him. So, the scorpion can move... Well, it's like almost no matter where we go here, the scorpion's going to be able to get to us. So I think we just deal with it as it happens. Oh, good. That's actually... This is great. So we can get rid of the scion right away. This guy isn't even attacking anything. 
I already think no, I think I already know exactly what I want to do here. So let's just let's just get rid of the scion right away. We can knock this guy back to block a spawn, and then we use our artillery to push the Firefly onto the Tidal Wave, because these tiles will turn into water at the beginning of the next turn, and so it'll instant kill him. So let's do exactly that. This unit was webbed, yep, but if we attack it, it will move. He's going to take one damage next turn. Oh! See, if I attack here... This is what I'm talking about. You gotta, you gotta be more judicial with what you're doing. If we attack here to push this guy, it's gonna push the scorpion back to where it was. So let's, let's instead just take, let's just do a basic one damage here. He'll die from the emerging vec next turn. Can you upgrade all your units to the max, or do you have to choose between individual parts? Um, typically you're not gonna have enough cores to fully upgrade things. Okay, so if we move these two, this Firefly will be able to hit the power plant. So what we could we could do a couple different things here. I think we. How much HP here? And we're webbed. If we knock this web. I think, I don't want to overthink this. I think we just move here, we block a Vex spawn, we take the damage. I think we just have to punch him. He'll die with the, uh... Hmm, okay. We have to, I mean, we can't let the power plant take damage. If we move over with Vastin, He'll be waterlogged next turn, but that's fine. Can we knock this over? He's blocking a spawn, and he'll attack his ally. Yeah, but then he's... He's pushed over here. I think... I don't want to take grid damage. I'm willing to take damage on Beeman. Something is in the tidal wave zone. They'll die before they can do anything the next turn. Correct. Um, not flying units, I don't think. But there are no flying units. Again, there's just a few different things I can do. I think I'm just going to shoot this guy into the water, move my combat mech up to just punch this fellow into this spawn. So go here. We shoot. He's dead. That frees up my combat mech to move here and punch. That'll do two damage. He'll die from the emerging vec. Yeah, I think this is fine. So we block a spawn here, and we punch here. Perfect. Actually, that won't block the spawning Vec because he's going to kill his buddy. Yeah, I know. So he's waterlogged. We just move him out of there next time. There we go. They kill themselves. Really running out of space here. Okay, so no matter what, this guy's gonna die next turn. We don't have to really worry about him at all. We can push him one tile over. So that he's blocking. First of all... Yeah, I think we just shoot here. We can punch him into his friend. I can't quite... Oh, no, this will work. Okay, so we punch him into his friend. That's one extra damage. Beeman's going to block the shot into the power plant. We come here, and we and we shoot him. Well, we can kill this. We can kill one or the other here. Someone's going to take damage. It really doesn't matter who. So let's just shoot here. It'll knock him into the wall. He takes one damage, and he's dead. Out of curiosity, how many mech crews have you unlocked? I've unlocked two other ones on my other save file. I just started fresh on this one. 
just so people could understand how to how, what, what's going on with the game. So does anyone have any questions on how this works? Because every so often I'm gonna feel like I'm stuck and folks can give me I ideas on what I'm supposed to, what I should be doing. Defend the tanks, kill at least seven enemies. I'm leaning towards one of these two. I still do not like this map layout like at all. So I think we go to Safeguard Valley. And we have to defend these two tanks, which eventually will come online and help us. Yeah, let's try this. Early Scion sucks. Um, there's no webbing, so we can just drop pretty much right in the front. Can you upgrade your robots? Not, not yet. Oh, nice, okay. It's one of those pods, might be someone inside. You want to prioritize picking these up. Time Pod contains equipment from the future. You can collect it with your mech or just defend it until the end of the battle. Basically, if an enemy steps on it, it'll be destroyed. Hey Jay, will you play Wolfenstein the New Colossus? I have, but only, you know, by myself. So I think, <coughs> excuse me, what we can do... See, what I'd love to do is push this Scion, but we'd, ha we'd hit our own tank, which we need to survive. So an obvious thing, we, we could block this Firefly's attack by moving Beam in here. So we get the pod. We shoot the him so he gets pushed, so he's not, so he's gonna miss the tank. We just run up and we punch the shit out of the Scion. And we can use the artillery to just block Brett from taking any damage at all in the first place. So let me undo that. Is there a better place we want to put him? I don't think so. Okay. Scion's gone. Yeah, and then we just push him. And I think after two turns, the tanks come online and I can use them as well. They don't do damage, but they push. Okay, so... Hmm, this is not great. This isn't attacking anything. Obviously, I would move this guy first, but what would this allow me to do? This would push the tank into the fire. Attacking here would push him out of the way. This only has one, one HP, so we could easily get rid of him. What I could do, so let's say we move here. And we were to punch him into the fire, he would die next turn before he shoots. So we move here, we punch him into the fire, that will kill him before he can even attack. We, that means we can leave the artillery to shoot here, which would push and break the webbing and save the tank, and then we use Beeman to kill the Firefly. Yes, okay. So he's punched, and on fire. We take the shot here. Again, this one's dead no matter what. We move up with Beeman. We didn't block any spawns, but, you know, still not bad. I think we got the tanks now. Okay, I have tanks online. So what we could do with the tanks, like, we could just push this guy away. And he would be safe. How do you do two damage with the tank? Was it upgraded? It, the Firefly had already taken one damage. The tank only does... All, so my artillery, when it's shooting straight on, does one damage, and then it pushes everything around it. The tank only does one damage. But it pushes. And then the mech does two damage and pushes, but it's melee. So at this point, I have to decide, like, maybe it's worth just taking extra damage. Like, this Firefly's in a bad spot. This is going to be pretty tricky. We might have to take damage. 
So while the tanks, it's tempting to just shoot here just to break the webbing. So we can use this tank to move up and break the webbing. Pow. Then we can move with the artillery to do something else. So I think that's our first order of business. So we break the webbing. He's moved. He's going to attack his friend. So if we can do one damage to this firefly, then he'll die. Well, what's the attack order? Yeah, so he attacks last, which means that he's going to attack first and kill the firefly, assuming we do one damage to it first. With the artillery broken, we can move it back. Yeah, I think this will work. So you're on fire, which means you're going to die no matter what if we punch you. So let's... Do this. You're dead next turn. Let's push here. We move the artillery. We move the artillery here. I'm not sure what to do with my artillery, to be honest. I just want to move it out of the way. Yeah, see, he's going to die. I, w I would like to use him to block a spawn, but it's it's not going to work. Let's just move here. Oh, that's going to move him. So that's not going to work. Crap. <laughs> we take the shot here. Oh, this sucks. <laughs> it's not what I had hoped for. We can always reset the turn as well. Uh, okay, this will work. So we move our remaining tank here. We shoot it. It's going to knock them into each other so they take extra damage. Okay, there we go. That's the damage that we needed. Meanwhile, we can just take our shot here. Okay. Haha, ha, dead. We have more emerging vec. Only one we only have to survive one more turn. And I have plenty of health on my units, so it doesn't matter if they take damage. Okay. So obviously I want the tank to survive. If I move here. I could kill both of these in one shot because you do one damage to the firefly and then it takes extra damage because it's getting knocked into the scorpion, which would also take damage instant death. I can't do both of these, though. That's the problem. I think we do this with our... Yes, so we do this with Deltrin instead because he doesn't have the move... He doesn't have the movement to do this. So there we go. That's done. And then we just move here and shoot. Shoot, just to avoid that. And then we can get the last kill with Vastin, even though we put him in the... F oh, no, wait. Let's just get this kill with Vastin so we get the XP. Yep, that should do it. Unfortunately, we couldn't kill him. There's probably a way to do it, but I'm not going to reset just for that. So, there we go. We probably could have gotten the XP for killing him, but it doesn't matter. We got our bonus objectives. There is friendly fire in this game. It's just, uh, it's only if you're, are you, are you attacking your friends directly or not? The vac had been put down and old earth technology is up and kicking. Couldn't have hoped for better. This is going pretty well. We got a pod as well. Nice. Okay. So we got a new pilot. This mech can move through enemy units and a reactor core. 
And then Deltron got promoted, which gives him an extra reactor. So a couple things. I'm going to want to change my pilot. So we're going to put uh, Henry Kwan in the uh, combat mech because his bonus is he's maneuverable. And my melee mech is the one that I want to be able to move through other units. So who else is here? All right, Henry Kwan, you are now SM. I can't use periods in the name. <laughs> but SM, you've been promoted. Uh, and then we're gonna we're gonna replace. Uh, I'm sorry, Beeman, but you're gonna get replaced here by Deltron. Is this game free? No, it is not. It's by the makers of FTL. And it's I think I think it's 14.99 USD. Okay, so now we have uh, we have uh, reactor cores that we can spend. Um, I'm probably thinking about giving it to. SM, we can increase his health or his movement. Deltron also got one just for leveling up, so only he can use it, and I think I would love to upgrade the damage on the tank, but instead I think we'll upgrade either the health or the move. The health is important because you want to use your mechs to block spawns, and which costs health to do, so it's probably worth upgrading health for now. We can always reallocate that. And then Deltrin has a point. I'm sorry, SM has a point. Which I think I also put into health or... You know, we're going to put him into move. Into movement. Yeah, okay. Now, if, you're, if your mechs go down to zero HP in a mission, the mech doesn't get destroyed, but the pilot dies. So the pilot... Or the, the mech can be piloted by AI if you don't have a if you don't have a pilot, but you lose the bonuses. Like we would lose experienced reactor if Deltrin died, for example. Okay, so I'm gonna try to use the cannon mech to block incoming attacks basically, because he's got more HP. And then I'll try to use the combat mech just for, because he's melee, I need the, I need the extra mobility and he's maneuverable. So that should work out. So we can go to Antiqu Antiquity Row, which just requires us to kill a lot of enemies. And there's landmines. Which is bad for the enemy and also bad for us. I do not like this setup. Getting around this middle mountain would be a pain in the butt. I think we do one more and then that will complete the island. You only have to do uh, four per island and then there's a boss fight. So 